So we've got a pretty good background as far as what exponential functions are, um, how they work, um, kind of you know the general idea of what their graph is going to look like. Now we're going to talk about logarithmic functions, which essentially uh, log log functions and exponential functions are inverses of one another. Okay, so um, if you kind of understand the whole basis for how you graph and what an exponential function looks like. Um, the log function, uh, after talking about all that inverse stuff, um, a log is basically just going to be an inverse of the exponential function. So, you know, if you know the points or something that happen to be on an exponential function's graph, uh, if you flip flop the x and the y value, you'd be able to go ahead and figure out what the points are going to be as far as the logarithmic function or the log function is concerned. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to discuss the relationship between exponential and log functions. Basically, if you know what an exponential function is, you can write the equivalent or inverse, I guess you could say, uh, log function. Okay, and then we're going to talk a little bit about graphing and doing some of that stuff at the end. Um, but we'll get into that a little bit more as we go here. So again, if you want to kind of split this up into a couple of different parts, um, you sure can. You know, as far as just going from one form to the other, exponential to log or vice versa. And then when we get into some of the um, the graphing and stuff later, you know, uh, give yourself a break in between and kind of split it up. All right, so we're going to talk about logarithms, or basically just referred to as log logs. Um, we have common logarithms or common logs, and then we're going to actually show what a logarithmic function or a log function looks like, which basically just means we're going to include the whole f of x thing. All right, first, we just need to talk a little bit about what a log function is. And I think the easiest way to think about something like this would be to just start with a basic um, exponential function that's kind of they give you a scenario up here at top um, I'm just gonna take that whole scenario and I'm gonna explain it a little bit different so if you want to read what's going on here you sure can um, it's just one of those things where uh, I think it makes a little more sense to do it this way so basically if you have an exponential function 2 to the x and you know that it's supposed to equal 8 essentially what you're trying to figure out is what power do I have to raise 2, 2 in order to get 8. Okay, well, most of us can just look at this in our head and say, all right, well, it's 3. Okay, another way to write that would just simply to be write a log function. We can say the log of 2, log base 2 of 8 equals x. Okay, well, essentially when you're taking the log, what you're trying to do is you're trying to figure out, okay, what do I have to raise the power of 2 to in order to get this number that I'm actually taking the log of right now? So you can kind of think about it in a little bit of a circle. 2 to what power is going to give me 8? Okay, so you can kind of see how we're going to be going back and forth between the two of these. Okay, what power do I have to raise 2 to in order to get 8? All right, we can write it as a log and say log base 2 of 8 equals x, or in other words, what power do I have to raise 2 to in order to get 8? Okay, now in this case, obviously, it's one of those things where the answer is going to be 3. All right, now we'll explain this a little bit more in detail as we move a little bit further along here. Now, this just kind of summarizes what I already said, and they just use a little bit different um, scenario up top. But basically, you'll just want to keep note of this right here. A logarithm is the exponent to which a specified base has to be raised to in order to attain a given value. So in the case of 2 to the x, like I had before, let's use something different. Let's just say 3 to the x equals 9. All right, well, again, most of us just looking at that can realize that we'd have to raise 3 to the second power to get 9. Now, as a log, you would say again, my base is going to be the number that I have to figure out what I have to raise to in order to get 9. And my answer would be the x value. Okay, Or basically, again, what power do I have to raise 3 to in order to get 9 is my answer. Log base 3 of 9 would give me x, which in this case is going to be 2. So I have to raise 3 to the second power in order to get 9. All right, now this, this slide is important. Uh, because it basically kind of explains everything that I've talked about already. So if you didn't really get what I was talking about to begin with, it's kind of just throwing it out there and going with it. 
Uh, this time around, this will help you explain. So if you have something that's in um, exponential form like this, all right, we can take that and we can write it as a log. So essentially, the base of your exponent becomes the base of your log. Okay, whatever it is that your exponential function is supposed to equal, that becomes this aspect of the log function. And then whatever exponent you're trying to find is basically going to be uh, the result of your log. Okay, so basically, and I've already kind of mentioned this, maybe didn't explain it a whole lot, but this is going to be read, if you look at this down here in the bottom, log base b of a is equal to x. Okay, so the log base b of a is x. Notice that the log is the exponent, or basically the result of the log, whatever you get by evaluating the log, is equal to whatever the exponent is supposed to be on your exponential function. So all we're going to really start with here is just going from one form to the other. Okay, so these are all kind of set up for you already as far as you already know what the exponent is, you know what the result is supposed to be, so on and so forth. We just have to take a look at this and figure out how we would go from exponential form or an exponential equation to a logarithmic equation. Okay, so again, remember when you're going this, the log, okay, the 3 or the base of your exponent becomes the base of your log. Whatever you're supposed to get for your exponential equation goes in there. So in other words, what power do I have to raise 3 to in order to get 40, 243, which is 5 in this case? Okay, so log base 3 of 243 equals 5. All right, so just going from one form to the other. Same thing on the next one. Log base 25 of 5 would equal 1 half. In other words, if you take 25 and raise it to the 1 half power, which is essentially the same as square rooting it, you would get 5. Okay, uh, next one, log base 10 of 10,000 equals 4. If you take 10 and raise it to the 4th power, you're going to get 1,000. Okay, uh, the next one, log base 6 of 1 sixth is going to equal negative 1. All right, and the last one, log base A of C is going to equal B. Okay, so again, just remember, all you're trying to figure out with a log is what exponent do I have to raise my base to in order to get the resulting answer. Okay, so here's another one. Um, why don't you go ahead and just take a chance to quick write these down on your own, um, pause your video, and then come back, and then we'll talk a little bit about uh, what you came up with. All right, so... All I'm going to do again is I take the base of my exponent, it becomes the base of my log. Whatever the equal part is, that's the part that goes into the log right here, and that's supposed to equal my exponent. So 9 to the second equals 81. Here, log base 3 of 27 is equal to 3. Um, down here, log of x to the 1 equals zero. Now essentially what this is saying right here is x raised to the zero power gives you one. And just remember anything raised to the zero power gives you one. All right, and that's going to be something that we discuss a little bit more here in detail as we move forward. Okay, now we're going to go the opposite direction. Okay, so really what you're doing is understanding what this means in terms of an exponential equation. Alright, so again you just start with the base. So nine to the first equals 9. Okay, so kind of work in a circle starting with your base is the easiest way to go from log form back to, back to exponential form. So 2 to the 9th is 512. Okay, 8 to the 1 -third equals 2. 4 to the negative second equals 1 16th. And b to the 0 equals 1. Okay, so again, just work in a circle. Starting with your base, 2 to this power gives you whatever it is you're taking the log of. Okay, so again, here's some more examples for you. Why don't you pause, see if you can get these three written correctly, and then I'll go through the answers. All right, so here we're going to take 10 to the first equals 10, which makes sense. Anything to the first is just itself. 12 to the second will equal 144. And one half to the negative third 
would equal 8. Okay, now that's one of those things I'm just concerned about you getting written correctly. We'll talk a little bit more about how negative exponents are going to affect everything as we move forward here a little bit. Okay, so here's just a couple special properties that you want to make sure that you're aware of. First, if the base of your log and the number that you're taking the log of are ever the same, the result of that log is always going to be 1. Okay, so if you have log base 10 of 10, you get 1, because essentially what it's saying is 10 to what power gives you 10? Well, in order to get the same thing that you start with, the only thing the exponent could possibly be would be 1. Okay, on the bottom here, if you ever take the log of just 1, the answer has to be 0, because the only way you can get 1 is the result of having an exponent that is 0. Okay, so again, if you're taking log base 10 of 1 over here, 10 to the 0 power is the only thing that will give you 1. Okay, so just a couple things that they'll come up along the way. You just need to make sure that you understand um, how they work. Okay, now there'll be a lot of times when you see something that's just written like this. Okay, it'll just say log 5. There's no base written there. Well, if there's ever a situation where there's no base written for you, you always assume that it is base 10. Okay, now these are referred to as common logarithms or common logs. Okay, anytime you have 10 as a base, it is referred to as a common log. Now, something important about these is when you look at your calculator and you have a log button, a common log button on your calculator, you can only evaluate logs on your calculator if they are of base 10. If they are not of base 10, then you're going to have to do a little bit more work to figure something out. But just make sure you understand that log of 5 is the same as saying log base 10 of 5. Okay? And basically what we're going to work towards here is just using some mental math uh, in our head to evaluate some of these. Okay? So here's a common log. Okay? There's no base, so we assume it's base 10. So what this is saying is the way I usually like to write it to start with is just like this. We'll say it's equal to x or it's equal to something we don't know. So what this is saying is 10 to the x equals 0 0.01. Now, I'm sure some of you are thinking right now, oh my gosh, what are we supposed to do? It's supposed to equal a decimal. All right, well, it's not really that big of a deal. The thing you just need to think about here is if this number here is a decimal or a fraction, the number you're taking the log of is a decimal or a fraction. That means that the exponent that's here, okay, or the x, whatever you're trying to find, is probably a negative number. All right, so the easiest way to think about this is first, 0 0.01 is the same as saying 1 over 100, okay, or 100. Okay, now if you remember how exponents work, the only way to take a whole number like 10 and essentially turn it into a fraction is the exponent here would have to be negative, okay? So basically, we have to have a negative exponent that takes the 10 down to the bottom. All right, and then makes 10 a hundred. Well, we all know that 10 squared is a hundred. All right, so what I'm thinking here is 10 to the negative second equals one over a hundred. Now I'll explain that here, okay, real quick. Okay, obviously the whole negative aspect of the exponent means I would have to flip it first to make it positive. Okay, then once I flip it, one over 10 squared is one over a hundred. All right, so the result of this is negative 2, okay? Or the exponent that you have to raise 10 to in order to get 0 0.01 is negative 2. And honestly, that's probably the most difficult or confusing part about logs is when you start having negative numbers that are the result of your logs like we did right there. Because then you have to start thinking, okay, I got to flip something, so on and so forth, moving forward. All right, now this one's a lot more straightforward and a lot easier. So I'm just going to write it like this. All right, and I'm thinking 5 to the x is supposed to equal 125. All right, so what power do I have to raise x to in order to get 25? Well, 5 to the second would be 25. And if I take it times another 5, that would give me 125. So x is supposed to equal 3. Or in other words, the value of this logarithm, or the exponent I would have to raise 5 to, is 3 in order to get 125. Alright, here's another one. Okay, where we're talking about 
uh, evaluating, and again, I'm just going to set it equal to x. You can honestly, you can pick any variable you want to set it equal to. I just feel like it helps to have it set equal to something so you kind of understand what's going on here. All right, so what this is saying is 5 to the x equals 1 fifth. Now, again, the only way to go from a base of 5 to something that's a fraction would mean the exponent I raise it to would have to be negative. Okay, now you notice the base here and the number on the bottom of my fraction is the same. So in this case, I just have to flip it over with a negative and then keep that number the same. So what I'm going to say is 5 to the negative 1 is going to equal 1 fifth. And we'll just check. Negative means flip it over. So I'd have 1 over 5 to the first, which is just 1 over 5. So my answer here is going to be negative 1. And again, it's one of those things where uh, you might have to work with it a little bit to kind of understand uh, what it's asking in here. Okay. Now, if you need a break or you want to go ahead and take a look at some of those that are on your assignment, uh, now would be a good time to do so. And then you can come back and we can talk a little bit about how this, um, how these functions work as far as graphing, so on and so forth. All right. So we already said that logs are inverses of exponential functions. All right. So when we talked about exponential functions, which would like be represented over here by the blue line on the graph, okay, we said the domain is going to be all real numbers, or essentially you can fill in any x value you want, and you're always going to get a y value out. Okay, there's nothing that impedes our domain. You can fill in anything you want. Our range is just going to be based on wherever that horizontal asymptote is. Okay, in the case of the graph that's right here, remember as this graph continues to go this way. It's going to get really, really close to zero, but it's never going to touch zero. So in this case, the range is going to be y is greater than zero. It's never going to touch zero, and everything else that shows up on the graph is going to be going up that way. Okay, now, the other way around, your inverse or your log function is just going to be flip-flopped. Okay? The domain of your log function, in this case, we're looking at x values. Okay, so remember your log. Um, if you take the log and you get a zero, that is possible to get a log as a zero. Okay, um, but in this case, if you're looking at the graph right here, okay, uh, we'd basically just be taking all the values of this graph right here. All right, and we're flip flopping the x and y values. You know, to get a graph on the other side of the line. So here is the point. We're going by two. So we have two, four. That means you have the point four, two on your other graph. So the easiest way to graph these is graph the exponential function. And then if you're going to graph the inverse, which in this case is a log function, you just flip flop the, the points and do it that way. So then you don't have to worry so much about filling in numbers to this particular function to get to make it work. Although, you know, you always could. The easiest thing to think about would be, all right, well, the first number I'm going to fill in for x uh, is probably going to be 1, all right, because if I fill 1 in, anytime you take the log of 1, well, 2 to what would give you 1? It has to be 0. So you fill in 1, you get 0. And that's why our line would be right here, or our point would be right there. Uh, the next one would be always fill in the number for x that's the same as your base. So log base 2 of 2 is going to give you 1. So at 2, you're at 1. From there, it does become a little bit more complicated. Um, that's why I think the easiest way to graph these is once you get your exponential function graphed, just flip-flop all the data points, uh, flip-flopping x and y around to graph it that way. Okay. So again, domain and range just gets flipped. For the domain of the log function, okay, or the domain of the inverse, Okay, your domain is going to be x has to be greater than zero. Okay, or you're going to have a vertical asymptote this time. Your graph's going to get really, really close to that line, but it's never ever going to touch it. Your range in this case is going to be all real numbers. Okay, because we're going to continue going down, and as this continues over, it's going to continue to go up. All right, so your range is going to be uh, all real numbers. All right, so you can just see how they're flip flopped when we do all this stuff. All right, now here's an example again, kind of like we did the exponential stuff. Um, you use the x values given to you to graph the function and then graph its inverse, describe the domain and range of everything that's going on here. Now, this is one of those things again where because the base of our exponential function is 
uh, what do I want to say? It's a decimal. It's probably easier if we just fill these numbers in. So if I take 1.25 and raise it to the negative second, I'm going to get 0.64. All right. If I take 1.25 and raise it to the negative first, I'm going to get 0.8. If I fill 0 in for x, anything to the 0 is just 1. If I fill 1 in, I'm going to get 1.25. And if I fill 2 in, 1.25 raised to the second, it's going to be like 1.5625. Okay, now, I already have the graph of the exponential function up here in blue, uh, just because I figured it would be easier um, than me trying to find all those decimal points along the way. Okay, now remember, as far as this is concerned, or as far as this works, okay, before, remember on the previous, the previous slide, our original function was y to the 2x, okay? Our log function then was log base 2, oops, base 2 of x, okay? So in this case, it's going to be similar. The function I'm given is right here. The inverse is going to be log base 1.25 of x, okay? Now, we can talk about, you know, the different ways to make that work as far as finding inverses. But basically, what it comes down to is um, you just kind of, you'll get used to how this is supposed to work when you're supposed to write one or the other. Now, this is the inverse. Uh, it's just one of those deals where to graph it, you're just going to want to take the points of your original and kind of move them, flip-flop them. So, like, for example, if I look over here, it looks like I have the point... Um, 0, 1 on this graph, so that means I'd have the point 1, 0 on the graph of my inverse. Or if I go down here, it looks like I have the point 3, 2, so that means I'll have the point 2, 3 on my inverse. Okay, uh, moving back down here a little bit, looks like I have the point negative 3 and like 1 half. Okay, so that means I will have the point 1 half, negative 3 on this graph. Okay? And pick one more out here. It looks like we're somewhere around 5, 3 out there. So that means 3, 5 would have to be on my other graph. So you can kind of get a general idea of what your graph is supposed to look like. All right, again, it's going to get really, really close to touching the y-axis, but it never will. So its um, domain is going to be x is greater than zero again. Okay, or basically the only x values you see will be here on over. Okay, I'm gonna probably put an open circle there because it's never gonna touch zero. Meaning the line, the vertical line, x equals zero, is gonna be a vertical asymptote of this particular function. And as my graph continues to go up this way, it's gonna continue to go over, it's gonna continue to go up, so the range, okay, the range is gonna be all real numbers. Okay, so just you know, kind of taking a look at this stuff to see how it works. Um, it can take a little bit of time to think about how that's going to work, but again, the easiest way to graph this, rather than filling values into a log function and trying to evaluate them, because really, you know, there's only a couple that are really easy. It's easier to just take your original exponential function, flip-flop the signs, and just remember, we can tell they're inverses because it's reflections across the line y equals x. Okay? Now I do have another example uh, of one in here we can go ahead and take a look at. Okay, so this is just one of those things where uh, we have one half and we're going to raise it to the negative second. So we actually get four. Okay, we're going to raise it to the negative one. That's going to give us two. We're going to put zero in. That's going to give us one. We put one in. We get one half. And if we put two in, we're actually going to get one fourth. Okay, so that's my original function, which again is graphed over here. It's an example of decay, all right, because we have a number in there that's less than one. All right, now as far as graphing the inverse function of that, I'm just going to take all these values on the bottom and I'm going to flip flop x and y around. So we have the point negative two, four, that means we're going to have four, negative two. All right, we would have two, negative one, we would have one, zero. We would have one half, one, and we would have one fourth and two. 
All right, so this graph is going to go right around in there in this way. Again, your domain is just going to be x has to be greater than 0 because we're never ever going to cross that 0 horizontal or excuse me, vertical asymptote. And your range is going to be all real numbers. This line is going to continue to go up to fill on or take on x values. This one's going to go over, but it's going to continue to also go down. All right, so all your y values are going to be present when we look at that. Okay, so again, a little bit easier when you don't have decimals in here. And again, it's something that you can fill into your calculator. Uh, I just want to make sure that you kind of understand what's happening when we fill negatives in here. So like if you take one half and you're raising it to the negative second, all right, what you can you can think about it two ways. Um, the easiest way is everything inside is getting raised to the negative one half, or excuse me, the negative second. So it's going to look like this when we do that. Okay, in order to make both of those exponents positive, you just have to flip-flop things. So I'm going to have 2 to the second over 1 to the second, making them positive. All right, on the top, I get 4, and on the bottom, 1 to the second is just 1 anyway. Okay, so that's how we arrive at 4 after filling in a negative number there. Okay, and again, it's one of those things that's going to take you a little bit of time to get used to how that's supposed to work. Okay, um, this is just a reminder of what we talked about already. Uh, the log key on your calculator only evaluates um, log base 10, so it's something that we don't really use a whole lot. Um, you can use the second log, bunk, uh, log function to find the inverse of the common log, but again, it's one of those things that doesn't necessarily um, do us a whole lot of good because we don't actually work with common logs a whole lot. Most of the time, our logs um, have different base numbers already. Okay, now the last thing, um, what we're looking for is, and this is just something that you're not supposed to know on your own, but what we do if we take the negative log of the uh, hydrogen ion concentration, we get the pH of something. Okay, so honestly, it's not really that difficult. What you're going to do is you're just going to take all of these values right here that are your hydrogen ion con um, concentrations and you're going to fill these numbers in for the H positive and you're just going to evaluate to find the pH. So for example if we take the negative, and these are common logs so you actually can use your calculator, negative log of 0 0.00000025 we hit enter, we get roughly um, 6.6 .6 for your pH for that one. Okay, if we do the same thing, negative common log of 0 0.00003.16, we get 4.5 as a pH. And for the bottom one, again, the negative log of 0 0.0063 is roughly 2.2 .2 pH. Okay, so it's just one of those things where... It's pretty simple, honestly, as far as just filling into this. You're going to fill in your hydrogen ion concentrations, take the negative log of those, log base 10, and you'll get your pH that you're looking for. All right, now that brings us to the end of everything that I needed to talk about here. Uh, you know, the big thing with this assignment is, one, being able to understand how negative exponents work with log functions and how to evaluate log functions or even exponential functions when you have negative exponents involved. Okay. The second thing is just understanding the domain and range as they relate to both exponential functions and logarithmic functions. And it's something that we can probably review again a little bit in class. We need to make sure that you kind of understand how that works on your own um, before you come to class. Okay. And then the last thing is, you know, the graphs aren't really that big of a deal, but it's one of those things where if you understand how to graph your exponential function and you understand that logs are basically just inverses of exponential functions, it's going to make things a lot easier because if you graph your exponential function, you just take all the points that are on that, flip-flop the x and y's, and you can graph your log function without having to fill in x values and evaluate them for your log. All right, so again, get started on your homework. Have an idea of what you do and don't know when you come to class. Uh, that'll make everything a lot easier for us in the end.